In this segment, we will introduce and discuss the Mann-Whitney test, a non-parametric alternative to the unpaired t-test just discussed. As mentioned in the previous segment, non-parametric tests generally do not rely on parametric assumptions, like having a Gaussian distribution. As such, the Mann-Whitney test has no rigid assumptions about the distribution of the populations from which the data has been sampled. Like many non-parametric tests, all calculations are performed on the ranks of the values rather than the values themselves. This has the advantage of reducing the influence of outlying or extreme data values on the calculations, thus making the test and resulting p-value insensitive or robust to outliers. Comparing the null hypothesis for the unpaired t-test with that of the Mann-Whitney test, we see that instead of focusing on the difference in the population means, the null specifies equality of the medians of the two populations under study. This is a natural result of focusing on ranks, which measure relative position or ordering of the data, rather than measuring the actual magnitude of the data values themselves. Returning to the cholesterol data, medians for each sample have been added to the data summary shown here. We see that the median for the cases is 268, and is actually higher than the mean for the cases of 253.93 indicating a left skew to the data. The median for the controls is 187 and is slightly lower than the mean of 193.13, indicating a slight right skew. This suggests that the estimated median difference between the groups may be slightly larger than the mean difference. What about the issue of the large difference in the standard deviations that was noted previously? There is no explicit assumption about equality of variances for the Mann-Whitney test, another advantage of basing the test on ranks. Here is the general test procedure for calculating the Mann-Whitney test statistic which the p-value is based on. Rank the values ignoring group membership. Simply list all of the values in both samples and organize them in ascending order. Each tied value receives the average of the two or more ranks which are tied. Now sum the ranks in either one of the two groups. This is your test statistic. Compare this sum to the expected distribution under the null hypothesis where all possible rankings are equally likely. In large samples under the null hypothesis, the distribution of the test statistic is approximately normal or Gaussian. Many software packages, including StatCrunch, use this approximation to calculate the Mann-Whitney p-value, provided the samples are large enough. StatCrunch indicates in the test results when this approximation has been used. In smaller samples, an exact approach based on the actual distribution of the ranks is used, the details of which we won't discuss here. Now let's look at the test results for the cholesterol data. The p-value generated by the Mann-Whitney is less than 0 0.0001. Since the p-value is less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our result is statistically significant. From a statistical perspective, we conclude that there is evidence to indicate that the median difference in cholesterol levels between cases and controls is not zero. For reporting and evaluating the clinical implications of the results, it is recommended to use the same approach as was used for the unpaired t-test. Report the estimated median difference, which is equal to 64. Report an approximate 95% confidence interval for the median difference with a lower bound of 44 and an upper bound of 84. And report the p-value. Looking at the results for the unpaired T and the Mann-Whitney test together, we see very comparable results. The estimated median difference of 64 is only slightly larger than the mean difference of 60.80. The width of the confidence interval is approximately the same for both tests, and as we mentioned, the p-values are comparable as well. Although this similarity in results is not uncommon, particularly for large, well-behaved samples, substantial discrepancies in results can occur in both small and large samples. Let's finish this section with some closing comments about the Mann-Whitney. 
both the median difference and the confidence interval for the median difference are complicated to calculate. We won't discuss the details and we'll leave it to StatCrunch to provide these values. This will be covered in the StatCrunch demonstration. The results of the Mann-Whitney can be reported and interpreted in an analogous fashion to the unpaired t-test. However, it is important to remember that this is a test of medians, not of means. There may be situations when the parameter of interest is the population median, and the Mann-Whitney test is the preferred approach for analysis. There may be other situations when the parameter of interest is the population mean, but the assumptions of the unpaired t-test are not met, and the Mann-Whitney is selected as a robust alternative to the t-test. We will address test selection issues further toward the end of this module. As is always the case, don't forget to distinguish between the statistical and clinical significance of the data and provide a clinical interpretation of the test results and estimated median difference in its confidence interval. With regard to test assumptions, the Mann-Whitney is based on the following assumptions. The samples selected are representative of the population of interest. The individual observations within and between both groups are independent. Lastly, there are no strict distributional assumptions required for the Mann-Whitney. This concludes our discussion of analyzing continuous data from two independent groups.